All right, so hello, I'm Nico. I'm a professor at the University of Oregon, and I'm a director of the Sustainable Cities Institute and the Urbanism Next Center uh, there. And um, what we do at SCI uh, is we look at sustainability broadly, work across a number of different disciplines uh, in the university, everything from uh, planning, architecture, design, landscape, uh, to business, journalism, arts administration, uh, economics, all pointed towards the idea of sustainability and the built environment that's our main focus. Um, at the Urbanism Next Center, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later, later, we've been working for the last three years on the impact of autonomous vehicles, new mobility, e-commerce, and the sharing economy on cities. So what, how is this new technology that's coming to us very quickly, and you see Uber all over the place, we learned yesterday it's illegal, yet it's all over the place here. Um, uh, how is this gonna affect the way the cities develop um, uh, throughout? So um, this is actually my second full ride. I did my first one uh, in, in uh, Spain at the, the uh, Universidad Politécnica de Catalunya. Sorry, right. yeah. The, um, uh, in uh, Barcelona, and um, actually developed a lot of the sustainable urban design framework that I'm going to be discussing here. That we're going to be working on here. Okay, so why Chile? Uh, as you saw from the last presentation, there's a ton of, if you look around across South America, uh, there's a ton of thinking around sustainability, conservation, uh, these types of efforts uh, in the country, and it's constantly ranked as one of the most progressive in terms of sustainability in Latin America. Um, uh, the work that we've been doing around sustainable urban design, we've looked at a whole lot of US examples, North American examples, <coughs> excuse me, and European examples, Really, uh, this seemed like a fantastic place to see, does this make sense? Is this, does it work for these types of contexts? What are they doing here that we can be adding to the way that we're looking at things? So it seemed like a really right place for, for uh, uh, exchange. And uh, I'm gonna be working at the Católica in the Instituto de, uh, de Estudios Urbanos y Territoriales, which is more or less exactly focused on this thing. So this is like, for me, you know, wonderful to come exactly to place and things at these issues and for us to almost be able to compare notes and see See how this all works. So I'm going to describe briefly what the sustainable urban design framework is, uh, um, and then uh, talk a little more about what we're, what we're going to be doing with it. So basically, sustainability. Everyone has heard the word a ton. We have some ideas, you know, uh, ecology, uh, um, uh, social and economic kind of pieces. When you get to the built environment, we know a lot about it. The building scale and urban design. It is a little bit of a mess. For the Work in this realm. There's a ton of different things, a ton of different pieces to think about. It's a, it, there's a lot of really good work, but it's all completely disassociated. And we have all these really different contexts, right? So this is Gabon, uh, this is uh, um, um, Shanghai, and this is Arizona, uh, all over the world. And so the question is, all right, as urban designers, as we approach this, what kinds of things can we think about? How, how can we, what can we learn from all these different places, and what kind of approaches how can we find these things? Um, there's Sustainability means a whole lot of things to a whole lot of different people, and it involves a ton of different disciplines, so built environment stuff, uh, ecology, biology, uh, energy studies, all these different pieces. And you know, uh, one of the things that, that kind of made us start thinking about how you frame this is, there's lots of places that show things like this and say like, oh, you know, we do sustainable urban design. And you're like, those are photovoltaics on a building, which has nothing to do with urban design, that's at the building scale. So we want to really think like, how do you organize a city to be sustainable? Um, there's rating systems that exist uh, throughout, but these are mostly to evaluate what you've done, not to figure out what, how you actually design, and that's really what we're focused on. Uh, and then there's just a whole range of fantastic literature out there that touches a whole bunch of different disciplines, uh, transportation planning, uh, uh, land use planning, uh, ecology, parking, there's a ton of great literature on parking. Uh, and the idea was really how do we bring all this together. So what we did is we did this very large literature review, and this was part of what we did when we were in Spain, um, and came with these uh, five main sections, energy use and greenhouse gas based on transportation and land use, so this is pretty much getting people out of cars and into bike, pet, and transit. Uh, water, and this is mostly stormwater issues, how to deal with the water that falls from the sky, what do we do with it? Uh, doesn't seem to happen at all here. <laughs> but if, when it does, what do we do with it? Ecology and habitat, pretty straightforward. Energy use and production, this is on uh, the building scale, how do we deal with uh, the interaction between building and uh, urban design. And then equity and health is really more the social pieces, right? And so what we did is we said, well, you know, urban design, from the physical design studies, we work on these four different scales, regional, district, neighborhood, block, street, and project parcel. And then we took, uh, 
guess we quiz on this later. Uh, <laughs> uh, what we did is we ended up taking all these little pieces that all this great literature I put together and said, well, let's just put it all in one place so that we can understand this. And what this does is it lets you think about, I'm interested in a topic, which most times when you talk to stakeholder groups is what they're interested in. Oh, these are all the things we need to think about. Or I've got a project at a specific scale. All right, these are all the things we need to think about. So it's really like just trying to get uh, uh, for your interaction with stakeholders and have you understand what questions you need to be asking and how their goals relate, relate to actual physical things. And for designers, planners, people who are actually working on the project, what questions you need to ask, what are the opportunities for, for synergies across different disciplines, right? So a lot of people know a lot about this who know nothing about like this, for instance, or like that. And so how do you get people to, to work together on these things? So I'm just going to really quickly, I know you guys are all like dying to learn more about urban design. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not at all. And I'm just going to really quickly show you like the idea of this. So for instance, in this uh, piece, so you know, getting people out of cars and bike pet transit, uh, so you, at the largest scale you think about things like urban land use, uh, uh, urban growth boundaries, right, and like where you limit the city and how you create large transportation networks. At the next scale, you really think about block patterns, block sizes, uh, the, the kind of organization, so that can you easily get from one place to another, and is that environment you want to be in. Uh, at the smaller scale block street, you start thinking about multimodal streets or multimodal streets that can bike, ped, transit, cars, all make their way through these things, and are they all, do they all feel protected and welcome? Uh, and then how do you deal with parking throughout, which is a huge issue, I'm going to that. And then at the building scale, how does the building face the street? Is it transparent? Does it have entrances? Does it make the space, space feel contained? And like, you know, somewhere that like, you know, the streets here are wonderful to walk along. There's all these activity going on. You want to walk along that. If you think about it in suburban context, or like, you know, walking by a Walmart, for instance, right? You, it doesn't have that same piece, so how the buildings contribute to those things. Um, so we've taken this as a framework, and we, like I said, we've done a lot of work on it in the last seven years uh, in, in North America and in Europe and actually uh, doing research around this and also applying it to project and the big question is how does this work in the Latin American context? Uh, this is like the whole impetus actually for, for coming down here. Do, are these the right questions? Does this make sense in the forms of development that we have here? We modified a lot of things as we looked at the European context and so we want to ask does this work and then at the same time what are you thinking about that we're not thinking about? So this is, like I said, we're really excited to be at the Catolica where there's a ton of thinking around this, everything from planning to sociology to uh, health and, uh, and to uh, urban design and architecture. And to kind of, so what we're going to be doing is two main efforts. One of them is going to be um, interviews with people across all these different disciplines within the university, but also in the, uh, out working in the private sector and kind of talking about what their approaches are, what they use to understand and frame projects. Uh, and uh, you know, introducing this to see, does this make sense? Does this relate to the way, the approaches that you've got, and what are we missing? Uh, and then the second part is going to be um, uh, that we're working, uh, that I'm teaching a course called Sustainable Urbanism uh, for graduate students, uh, where we're going to be, um, uh, I'm very, very much looking forward to this, uh, talking about all these topics and having them bring in examples from uh, 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 the literature in this area and examples from projects in this area. So to almost have like a dialogue each week of like, all right, now we're looking at this specific topic, how do these things relate across? And so a good opportunity for me to learn a lot and a good opportunity for them to learn a lot, uh, hopefully. Um, so that's the, the main pieces that we're going to be doing with this. Uh, also opportunities to, uh, there's people in Argentina that we're interested in connecting with, and uh, people in Ecuador uh, we're uh, interested uh, in connecting with uh, across these topics as well. Uh, so all that was what's planned, <laughs> what we are, think we're doing. Uh, but this topic is, you know, Fulbright is a long process when you first apply to like, here we are. Uh, and in that time, a lot of the work that we've been doing on this idea of emerging technology has taken off. And it's uh, a little bit, I won't go into depth on this, but it's a little bit terrifying uh, if we don't do this right. right? And, like all the, and more or less, all the work that we've been doing in sustainability is for not if we don't get the way that these new technologies are going to arrive well organized in our cities. And when we first start, we were just early in thinking about these things when we first applied for the Fulbright and had conversations with people here, and there didn't seem to be a lot of interest <coughs> here on those things, and now there's a, a, they're like, oh my god, there's like four people who are working specifically on these topics right now. So we might shift a little bit and deal with some of these topics as well uh, in terms <coughs> of how it is that, uh, you know, things like Uber, um, where you also don't need as much parking, or autonomous vehicles where you need no parking really because Move, uh, or um, and also put a lot of pressure on sprawl uh, because you can go further with uh, 
without having to drive, maybe you can be doing other things that can take you faster. Uh, so thinking about how these things might really impact CV, so that's I'm excited to have this conversation. We're just starting that uh, um, this week. As we talk about. Um, so that's uh, more or less what we're doing. I'm happy to answer any questions or not answer any questions. I was wondering um, if one comment that somebody made to me last week that, that might be interesting to you or, or I'd like to hear your reactions is the woman who is the former mayor of Santiago Central, Carolina Pajola. Um, I have a, luckily a contact through someone else, so I was able to have co coffee with her. And she told me something really interesting that, that Santiago has never thought on the level of city, it's always been just like the national, right? And so there, the idea of city design or urbanism is really new, and I never, it made sense in a centralized context, but I hadn't really thought of it, so she has a new NGO that's on urbanism, and so that might be really neat to be, connect up with her yeah, yeah. on yeah. the Santiago level, because she's went from mayor to now um, urbanist or okay. of some sort. and. That, so I that would might really be a really neat. Appreciate it. That'd be great. I mean, one of the challenges that we, even just in early conversations that we've seen with Santiago, is that we talked a little bit about this yesterday. There's so many separate municipalities or you know, governance areas. It is very hard. I mean, one of the big issues with urban design is that you have to, you can't just have a parcel, right? These are systems, right? right? So, what happens when you cross cross jurisdictional boundary, especially if they're not coordinated? Yeah. Okay, so this is there's like you know, some of the barriers that, that exist in creating large sustainable strategies. Uh, are definitely the metropolitan scale. And it is wonderful to see actually the amount of stuff that has happened here, even with that uh, that barrier, seems to even be larger than some uh, other metropolitan areas, which often have like fractured, uh, fragmented jurisdictions. But yeah, that, that would be great. I'd appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Good. So this is really interesting on a lot of levels. And the thing that was that I was thinking about during this presentation was um, when you were opening, you were talking about. Chile seems to rise to the floor on a regional level in terms of its appetite and demonstrated ability so far to think about sustainability, conservation, and everything. And so, you know, moving in similar circles as that and looking a lot at institutionality and the political forces behind these things, I'm really interested in how you position the political in your research. Um, if it can't be an overt, player, it is always behind the scenes exactly for the reasons why you yeah. just said, because these are, this is a scalar issue of how you knit together a bunch of different frameworks, both at a geographical scale, communists working together, but also at a hierarchical governance scale, how you get different ministries, sub-ministries to work together. And something that I found really interesting in my research is that, you know, trying to understand the there there of political, of environmental governance in Chile. And you have something like the sharing economy that's coming, and there is no there there yet, because it's unregulated, um, or as Antonio was saying, sort of willfully hanging in the balance because the government doesn't want to deal with issues around the taxi lobby. So I just, I guess I would, I'm just curious about how you are thinking about positioning the political piece here, because it is this kind of great elephant that um, can give some explanatory purchase to what is and is not happening. Yeah, the yeah. logic's behind it. So, so this is like the two parts I mentioned just briefly. I glossed over a lot of these pieces, but yeah. on the one hand, a lot of the work that we're doing is on the just what do I do? How do I design? Like really, from the production side, right? right? And on the other side is how do you implement, mm -hmm. right? Which is much more on the political side, on the stakeholder engagement, on like the the cultural values, right? And so in the interviews that we're going to be doing with people, uh, especially in the private sector, people are out trying to implement these things and like putting things into practice and trying to build projects or build some of these systems, uh, uh, talking about the barriers that they're running into, um, which are oftentimes political or just, just like the political organization, right? Less so like any will. Uh, and so that's, that's where we're hoping to uncover some of those pieces. Uh, and honestly, I don't know. I mean, we're, I've just been here a week. And so we're just uh, starting to have more in-depth conversations about these things. Um, my sense is that the people that I'm working with uh, at Católica are much more interested in these topics. Mm -hmm. So my sense is that we'll probably be leaning more towards that side than the, all right, so what exactly, what are the, the design rules, for instance? Yeah. There was 
I guess like from like the preliminary concept, what do you think is gonna be like the, the biggest challenge going forward or like just this whole thing because there's a lot of going on. With uh, sustainability or with the new technology? I guess both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with the sustainability piece, I think the piece you're talking about, it's, it's there's to me there's two main challenges. One is knowing what to do and the other one is knowing how to get it done. Uh, and then knowing what to do is that's the easy part, right? Because there's a lot of really good thinking out there that have, the stuff hasn't been integrated yet. Uh, um, so, you know, how can I have a bike path that also helps with stormwater management? That also helps with like uh, creating like you know uh, taking advantage of like micro uh, uh, micro ecologies. Uh, so that stuff is we're still learning, right? We still need to like teach that piece. The how to get it done, the implementation side, I think, is like the biggest barrier, and that is there is no like silver bullet because you know, as you're saying. Every place is different, and here, like our biggest problem is, you know, we've got uh, too much centralized control, and therefore you can't commit them. Here, we've got no centralized control, and therefore we like have all these fragmented pieces. So, like that, that's a, that is a, to me, that is the, the biggest uh, barrier. And on the emerging technology side, uh, the number one biggest barrier we have is that we are just not caught in this. I mean, this is the work that we do like crazy right now in the U.S. Is people are not cognizant of what the impacts are. You know, the presentation I give all the time on the next topics, I start with a picture that kind of looks like a Blade Runner, and we're like, all right, this is the future, right? And we look at this and we think, uh, this, we're not, our cities don't look like this, so we're not here. And then I show a picture of like some random, fairly bland street in Arizona, and I'm like, the problem is, this is the future. Like, they're running what's called level four automation, so cars that don't need anything in the front seat, like right now, today, you can go and like call up a car and, like a like Uber type thing, you get in a car that has no driver, right? And so like that change has arrived, and yet our cities still feel like they do. So we're like, ah, we're fine, and yet we're already seeing the impacts of all these new technologies, even now. So San Francisco, for instance, has 13 percent uh, reduction in parking utilization rates, and a growing economy, you know, uh, with like a growing population because of Uber. Right, so like that is a huge shift for how a city operates, and actually that's what mostly how they fund their tra public transportation system. Right, so this is, has tremendous implications, and we call them cascading effects, uh, and people just aren't aware of it. So we do a whole lot of outreach and, uh, to mostly get people to think about it, be like, oh yeah, that's gonna affect us this way, and so you can start putting that in your plan. Thank you again. Yeah. Right.